intention of this partnership is really to organize existing residents and connect with people who are visiting the area to talk about and learn about historic parks, historic buildings, and urban green space as assets for the future community development of the area. Well, I worked for Bon Secours and they do a lot more for this area directly. Okay. Parks and People is a lot broader. They actually have a new network called GBCAN or Greater Baltimore Children Nature Collaborative. So this would definitely fall under that flag mm -hmm. and anything to do with green or gre greening or green spaces uh, is a huge deal. So they, they especially work with underprivileged neighborhoods uh, with the greening grants that they put out every year. I can't remember exactly how many, but they have $1,000 and $5,000 greening grants. So they think they do it biannually. I'm involved in, um, as a volunteer base, uh, with an organization called Culture Works Organization, um, which is uh, located not too far from here. And what they do is, it's a festival and a coming together of an organization to bring culture and family and community together. And also revitalize historical um, areas in the community. I've been with Baltimore Heritage for about 10 years, and the first project that I did um, when I got on board uh, as the director was to work with Arlene Fisher, the Neighborhood Association president, on, um, on a history of the square and uh, the churches and the community around the square. Uh, what kind of positive effects do you think they have on the community? It gives you a place to go and just hear, be quiet, and have peace. I think if you could put peace on parks, I think you would have it. <laughs> Because it's a green space. It's some place where you can just come and relax. You don't have to pay. You can just enjoy each other's company and enjoy the community around it. And I think it helps, it impacts on the neighborhood as it goes out. It makes it more comfortable. Because, you know, parks, people, families come to parks. Um, they eat lunch. I see people eating lunch sometimes in certain parks. And um, communities have festivals. And I think if the parks are kept up, and like he mentioned, the history of the parks is posted. You know, people will know that, you know, this is more than just a park. It's something more. <clears throat> it's more than just a park because um, it encourages families to come together and neighbors to come together and, and have conversation. And you look at this, um, you look at this square here, and uh, it's, uh, one is it's spotless. You know, you, people have... Uh, People have an impression of West Baltimore as uh, vacant houses and crime and grime, but here is a square that, that um, any day of the week you come and there are people sitting on the benches um, and uh, underneath these trees, which are some are 100 years old, and it just is such an amenity um, that, uh, that, uh, to have this space here. Um, I did a lot of volunteer, a lot of beautifications projects, and that's why this is so important for me. I wanted to come and support and see what, and see what I can add in helping out because this is uh, a similar project that I used to participate in. So this is a great thing, it's a great thing. Um, I hope so. Um, you know, there are definitely programs that are moving in that general direction, uh, reclaiming green spaces and bringing more money into schools, stronger support structures for families and neighbors and neighborhoods. And, and I think we're introducing the right programs now. I am, I am hopeful that we can keep bringing in the right kind of support that allows projects like this, but also much larger scale projects to keep going. Fewer and fewer resources coming from both the, from the federal government or from the state government or from other governments at the same, and at the same time increasing competition for dwindling funds. Sure. Um, at the same time there's still I think a lot of people who are very much committed uh, in trying to do as, in, as much as possible with, a, with fewer and fewer resources. So yeah, I think in the future, I still, I'm optimistic about that too. Looking at the historical nature of the parks, this is the one thing that's lasted longer than anything else in the budget. So I think maybe they need to look at the history of these parks and how valuable they are to each community. I just love working with communities. I love working in gardens and I love working with kids. Um, and when I'm not doing my day job teaching in the classrooms, I love to be outside, to be out in these gardens uh, and in working on these things and talking with people about it and sharing our knowledge about these things and helping things grow and cool. hopefully getting to the point where we can actually harvest things. The kids, but it's also, it's the families, it's, it's the spirit of the place. It's knowing what once was here. This was like, I mean, West Baltimore was a bastion of just like cute culture and music and 
arts and, um, and life. We've lost a lot of that. We just need to um, have a little bit of faith, I think and a lot of money. For me, uh, the greatest part about Baltimore and about my job is getting to know the neighborhoods and the communities and the people who are working uh, really uh, tire tirelessly uh, to uh, keep the neighborhoods uh, going and make them better. Um, I love Sandtown with just community. I love the parks. I think uh, squares and parks are a symbol of unity and community. I think they have to remain. Um, I think it's a part of um, what we are as a people. So having squares and parks, I think, um, probably bringing them into uh, something beautiful is um, something that I'm going to continue.